Hey, I'm Robert Cheek from veganbodybuilding.com on behalf of ecovegangal.com with Whitney Lawrence and we're here at the Farm Sanctuary Hoedown, their annual big event with Will Tuttle, author of the World Peace Diet and his mm. wife Madeline. What's the uh, maybe single most important reason that you're here at the Farm Sanctuary today? We love animals and we're uh, here to spread the vegan message and to encourage people to connect with their own inner compassion and love of this beautiful earth and, and starving people to move to a plant-based diet. Let, let the animals live their lives in nature. Reducing the violence, yeah. getting some peace on earth. What's the most important thing that someone can do, anybody, uh, who's, not, uh, who's not vegan right now? What, what's the uh, easy change that they can make? Well, I think the most important thing they can do is to just find out what happens when they take out their wallet and pay for the flesh of animals or, or, this, or dairy products or eggs, just to find out, you know, what, is that, what does that dollar actually pay to have happen? Or, or same thing with really with leather and other products that come from animals. And I think once people just open and look behind the curtain and see that how much grain could be fed to starving people, that is fed to animals, and how much pollution it's causing, and environmental devastation, and how much stabbing and mutilating is going on to animals, then they can make the changes to shift to uh, veggie burgers and not dogs and <laughs> you know, bacon bacon and, uh, and but even better than that, you know, fresh, whole, organic, plant-based whole foods like vegetables and fruits and grains. I mean, that's the way we've been vegans for 30 years and it just gets better and better. I mean, the food gets better, life gets better, happiness continues to escalate. <laughs> You know, because we feel at home on the earth rather than sort of going around with this guilty conscience subconsciously. Most people don't realize it, but essentially when we don't respect animals, we lose our own self-respect at a deep level. And that's really why, why there's such a big problem with consumerism. People don't feel good about themselves and so they want to buy something that will make them feel better and happier. It's just a never-ending uh, suffering. The animals there are real. So. This book right here just became the number one book on the planet. Now, that's got to be super exciting for you. <laughs> and I know it is because we've emailed back and forth. Right. But tell me about it. Tell me how this happened, what it means to you, what it means for veganism. Well, you know, essentially, uh, Madeline and I have been living, this is our rolling home with a 27-foot uh, fifth-wheel trailer, solar-powered, uh, for the last... Uh, we've actually been living in it for 15 years, but for the last five years we've been traveling and giving lectures on the World Peace Diet. So we've been building up and making lots of contacts around North America with vegetarian groups, animal rights groups, environmental groups, church groups, yoga groups, spiritual groups, all these different groups. So we uh, were able to um, bring the message of the World Peace Diet to a lot of people. You know, and I think people are, you know, a lot of people bought it just to donate it to the lo local library to give. You know, a lot of people buy 10 or 20 just to give to friends or... So it's just sending a ripple effect out into the uh, world uh, for compassion for animals and uh, for veganism and for vegetarianism and for living a life of uh, love for all life. Yeah, and you can read it or you can listen to it. It's yeah. 13 and a half hours on MP3. Yeah, we have an it's audio really book great. too. Yeah, yeah. Audio. Now, Madeline, let me ask you, what, to you, what is the single most important message in the World Peace Diet? What can people take away from there that's probably the most profound thing that they'll get out of it? Um, I think it's um, creating a world of peace. It's taking the um, brutality out of our lives. What? is a more powerful word, vegetarian or vegan, and why? <laughs> What's a more powerful and influential word? Yeah, vegan is short, <laughs> and one gets it, you know. I mean, there isn't anything beside vegan. It's like vegetarian is kind of diluted. Uh, it's like still having some uh, animal products, cheese and everything. I mean, there is nothing about vegetables in, you know, vegetarian seems like everything is fruits and vegetables, but that's not true. They dilute it and uh, include cheese and milk and eggs, and this doesn't grow in the grass. So vegan is the only word right now. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, in the World Peace Diet, I only really use the word vegan because I think it, the, the power that the word vegan has is that it, it accounts for motivation, which the word vegetarian does. You can be a vegetarian for health reasons or because it's cheaper or because it's the in thing to do. 
But Donald Watson, when he created the word vegan, very conscientiously said it's a philosophy and way of life in which we seek to minimize the cruelty we're causing. So it has an underlying uh, power, an enormous power that the emphasis is on kindness and compassion to all life, to all living beings. And uh, I think the power that vegetarianism has is that most people who are eating meat become vegetarian before they go vegan. So I think in talking to some people who are eating meat, like typical people, I will sometimes use the word vegetarian just because that's where they can go. They, they can't really imagine, conceive of jumping all the way to vegan. But I think people who are vegetarian, <laughs> it's really uh, incumbent on them to you know, look a little deeper and move along to veganism. But I think the ideal of vegan, like Madeline said, it's so beautiful, it's so powerful. It's a, a word that really takes us to another level. It's, an, it's another uh, way of saying ahimsa or nonviolence. It's another way of saying love. It's another way of saying freedom for all life. You know, it's another way of saying we're all connected. It's another way of saying the truth is one and we're, I'm going to live this truth. You know, it's a word that I don't think one can ever totally ever achieve being a vegan. It's, um, I think giving up meat, dairy, and eggs and leather and silk and wool and all that, that's the very first tiny step. And, the, and then the vegan journey begins after that of including all beings in the sphere of our compassion and living a life of kindness and blessing. And I think then we connect with our joy. So yeah, vegan is the word. <laughs> Vegan's the word. I want to thank vegan you both. Vegan is the word. Uh, thank you both so much for being here at the Farm Sanctuary Hoedown 2010. We have four more on the roof that are up there. You can't see them, but they're up there doing the work and uh, bringing in 20 amp hours on a nice sunny day like this. It's, uh, we got more energy than we can even use. I mean, it's great. This so what do you house. power? You power your computer? Yeah, computer. Using a Mac? See that, Robert? A Mac. Oh, you're the best-selling book on the planet. You gotta have it online. You gotta be online. Like, you get got, online you've got through a Mac. This. See, this, yeah. is, this is getting online through the phone. Oh, really? Plugged in to the USB. Yeah, tethered in like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, we have got our other cell phone over here. We've got our. We've got our. This is attached to a uh, antenna on the roof. It plugs into the phone. You push this on, and that starts up all the AC. That's the inverter. Yeah, and, and I can run the Vitamix with um, can run anything oh. they see. when it's on there. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Living in this um, RV is a tiny eco footprint. All the energy comes from the sun. The amount of water we use is about only 80 gallons a week. So it's just a tiny amount of water. And then the propane? Um, propane we use for uh, the refrigerator and for heating this cooking. But one just a seven gallon tank lasts us probably two or three months. <laughs> so, um, and how does that tie into your veganism with the, the well, eco it's just side a of tiny, it? You know, and being a vegan, of course, is a small um, footprint also, eco footprint, but, but living in this just reduces it even, you know, a huge amount more because, you know, this, we don't use any energy hardly to live. The only energy we use really is to drive somewhere. Yeah. But we don't put that many miles on. We, we plan our, our route so that we're, basically we go north in the spring and south in the fall. We put about 15,000 miles a year on our vehicle, which is uh, probably less than most, a lot of people who are commuting every day, you know.